All right, YouTube, what is going on? It is Conflict Nerd Callum here today, bringing you another episode of my Transport Fever Let's Play. Uh, let's get Scotland moving. In today's episode, we're going to go ahead and start to prepare towards working on a railway line which is going to stretch from Edinburgh up to Perth, then Pit Lockery, then on to Aviemore and up to Inverness. This is essentially going to be like the Highland Railway Line. I talked about it uh, two episodes ago, I think. That's what I want to go ahead and implement. And it is relatively... I mean, it's, it's going to be relatively difficult to go ahead and build. Now, the stretch from Edinburgh to Perth will be easy. However, when you start to get into Pit Lockery and Aviemore, first of all, these two towns do not have train stations already, whereas Inverness, Perth and Edinburgh already do, which will help me out quite a bit. However, these two towns also have the uh, problem of not being very flat at all. But Lockery, as you can see here, it's on all different levels and all different valleys, and Aviemore is a similar situation. And along with that, in between the two towns, you've also got this monstrosity of just multiple, multiple hills, which it isn't a bad thing, however, it just makes life that little bit more challenging. So we are going to start to at least work towards that in today's episode, however that is not the main and only aim of this episode. Along with that we are going to go ahead and start to work towards some more intercity connections, expanding routes, modifying routes, that's something which we've not done in a while. We need to go ahead and review our progress. I've also made some changes which I'll make you aware of as well in a second. And also finally today we're going to be going ahead and adding in a boat at Dundee which is going to connect up to the Dunbar area. It's been coming for a long time but because we've got such a successful boat right now I do realise the camera's lagging quite a bit and I do apologise about this. We do have a really really successful boat line right now between Peterhead and Thurzo and I was like you know let's go ahead and build another one because boats are successful. So let's go ahead and continue to build them to make more money. Just one or two things I want to bring everyone up to speed on though, so first of all the game issues are starting to cause a little bit of problems as you can tell, probably from that little, well it wasn't even a cinematic, it was just me flying in between towns, it's starting to come a little bit more of an issue, however I do want to continue the series on to about episode 25, so what a lot of the building might consist of is just being on pause, which is something which I often do anyway, that's not a problem, and it just might mean when, which people are calling in the uh, comment section down below, which I think is very, very creative by the way, the lag belt, instead of the central belt, the lag belt, which I think is pretty funny indeed, I might just go ahead and have to pause when I'm down in that region for example. We also want to go ahead and touch on the lowlands very, very shortly as well, and in two episodes time my aim is to go and turn back to industry. Not to the industry that we've currently done, but we've not tapped into oil, we've not tapped into woos, we've not tapped into mining. I want to go ahead and start my journey on those resources in about two episodes time as well, and that will easily cover us for about four episodes. The time we go ahead and connect up all the towns, work on everything. There's a lot still to do in this map, and this series could and essentially go on forever, however there will be an end point which I reckon will be in about 10 episodes time. So the first thing is I want to go over is some modifications I've made. So it's mainly been with the trams and I've also done all the naming stuff, so for example this now is Highlands Airport. Probably should be Highland Airport actually, Highlands Airport. You know, I've gone ahead and named a lot of my stuff which is good to see. Now I've gone ahead and made quite a few modifications, so first of all the Inverness Airport bus is now the Inverness Airlink because that kind of makes sense. It was built before the Airlink in Edinburgh but I thought it's the same principle just connecting up Inverness to the Highlands Airport here so it makes sense just to have the same naming convention. I've also changed the buses out on that. They were going at, I believe there was two 60 seater buses on the Inverness Airlink line. I've now changed it up to three 40 seaters, so still the same capacity. However, it's just spread across three buses, so the buses are more frequent. However, in saying that, as we can see, the numbers are struggling a little bit, so again, there might be some more modifications there going forward. Turning our attention to trams, we can see that there's been quite a little bit of change. So, the good thing is that Aviemore Airport tram is finally in the profit, which is good. Taking a while, but it's there. The tram in Edinburgh and Berwick is already into the profit, which is great. Kind of surprised. Some of them are extremely full, as you can see those two are on 48. You're on 48. Okay, you're on 48. Okay, you're on 48. 
Right, okay, you're an 11. I was just waiting for that there, but I mean, a very, very promising sign to start off with. And I do think that was an extremely good build by myself, if I do say so. Now, you can see something very strange here. I've gone ahead and changed up the Elgin Airport tram. Now, why is this? First of all, the Citadis, they cost about 100k running costs per year. Whereas, if I go ahead and downgrade to these here, these are the... Mirage, I mean these are old trams, I think from like 1990s, they have a capacity of only 23, however that's really what's needed, we don't need big 48 seater trams on this line which cost me a ridiculous amount of money every year, I just need smaller trams which are more efficient to run, and that's what I've done, there's only 4 of them but as you can see they're getting a much higher fill capacity, which is really what I'm aiming for, we were never ever going to fill a Citadis on this line at all, so I think that's a good modification. As we can see as well at a few stops around Elgin, there is a few people waiting, 17 there, so I'm happy to go ahead and add on more trams of this type anyway onto this line going forward, because I think it's actually really going to work out. As well, it's just a little bit of variation between the trams. The next thing I've done is gone ahead and said what I was going to do at the end of the last episode, which was go ahead and we'll jump down to Sterling in a second, but I've gone back from the, we're experimenting on some of the larger trams, trams which had 64 seats, however we're nowhere near getting there, so I've downgraded it currently to 48 seats, however I'm getting the feeling that we might even be downgrading it again down to these trams which the Elgin tram route is using, because we're not really seeing too great numbers. I mean, it's strange. At some stages of the line, more around the, about the city centre, you're seeing an extremely high usage. But at other parts, you're not. So maybe it's something we need to modify the line. Maybe it's something that I need to go ahead and change the tram type. I'm not really at all sure, but we'll go ahead and look at that later on. The next thing is, I've gone ahead, and we, this is something we need to work on, so the railway lines. So this here is the railway line which goes from Aberdeen to Thurzo, or Thurzo to Aberdeen, whatever way you want to call it. I've gone ahead and added on an extra train, an extra 165 seats, and that will hopefully go ahead and make some difference. However, at the same time, I think it's maybe to do with the, uh, the underlying problem is actually the trains. If we go ahead and have a look, I think this really explains it the best. So we've only got four trains on the Peterhead to Presswick line, which is not a lot. It really isn't a lot, to be fair, and it could probably do with an extra one, which, yes, I'm considering implementing. Tell me if I should go ahead and add an extra train onto the Peterhead at Presswick railway line. Stop the video, or don't stop the video, but while I'm talking, go down into the comments section below, say yes or no to Peterhead Presswick, and make sure you put Peterhead Presswick so I know what you're referring to, because a yes or a no is not going to help me because I'm, I'm going to ask you quite a few questions going forward in this series. The next question is, should I go ahead and, I th I'm thinking I will, on the Aberdeen and also the Aberdeen Thurzo and the Glasgow Newcastle, I think I need to change kinds, the type of trains that we're using on that to go ahead and work on something different. And the North Food Line, I'm going to go ahead and deal with that off camera. I know what I need to do, it's just... I've j I don't know, it's something about the North Food Line, I've just, I've just struggled with it, I'm not going to lie, I have struggled with it. But I have added an extra train onto the passenger line there anyway. The final thing I want to go ahead and touch on right now is the planes. So the planes are starting to get a little bit more use, which is good. If we go ahead and see, there's only two on that, 13 there though, 0 and 4. That's a really, really bad example actually. In general, the planes are doing a little bit better from what they were which is a great sign, and I think we're starting to see a few bit larger numbers. To go down to Glasgow right now, there's 15 people waiting, so more encouraging signs, and we're also making the lowest loss we've made on those routes in recent times. So with all that said, that's pretty much what is going to be happening, what has happened, and what is happening currently in this series. So let's go ahead, and we're going to start off by building the boat, because I think that's something that is well overdue and interestingly actually we can see going back to i mean this is a while ago now going back to the dog's head the kingdom of fife my home at county as we can see here shaped like a dog's head we can see now that Perth and dundee it's near enough going up both sides of the river which is not really i mean these two towns in real life are quite far apart or not quite far apart but Perth and dundee are good 10 miles apart. There's a few villages scattered along the southern coast, or not southern coast, the southern shoreline of the River Tay. However, it's not like this, but as we can see on this, it's eventually probably going to land up being on both sides of the Tay. And I'm going to go ahead and actually make that 
I guess, come true with a bridge here, because I think this will really help out. So, if we go ahead and do a bridge over there, cost me a cheeky 2 million, and then we'll go ahead and we'll drag you, if we cannot do that weird connection, into about there, then that works out quite nicely. So that will just help out this area, and I can probably predict more growth in this area as well. The next thing we are going to do, though, is build this dock, which is going to go, I think, here. Now, the one thing that I think this might struggle with is that I am going to need to go ahead and modify some bus lines or some something anyway to come down to this area because right now the nearest, I mean the nearest bus stop isn't that far away, it's over here to be fair on Queen's Road, but that one's not actually in service. So I need to go ahead and it looks like the tram and the bus use the same stop here, so I could definitely go ahead and pull one of them away and just use the other. I think the trams are... The trams are doing interesting, the buses are, yeah, I mean, you're sort of stealing each other's market share. I could also have the Aberdeen bus coming into here, so I think we'll go ahead and analyse that decision a little bit more closely before we actually make it. So let me go ahead and actually think about this. So if we select all here, we can just see the route that all the lines are taking. So we've got the choice of the Aberdeen line, which is... Already I would say relatively busy and I don't think I want to go ahead and pull that right down to the dock. I think my real choice here is between the the black tram line and also the green bus line. And I'm thinking about the tram line. I think that's my honest go-to. I want to see how profitable it is though. So the Dundee Perth, it is making a fair profit, which I'm liking. And I think if we go ahead and pull it down a little bit, then I don't think that'll make too much of a difference. If anything, it might actually help out going forward. For this though, we need to go ahead and... Ah, oh, yeah, we could actually really do really well here. We could go ahead and connect up to this whole... Because, I mean, this whole bottom of the town, we've got what this stop here is. It's sort of serving this area, but it's a wee bit out of sphere of influence. So we can definitely go ahead and do some work, which is what I'm going to do right now. So let's jump in here. I think we're actually still going to have you going via that stop. Then you're going to come down and you're going to stop... I think we're going to have you stop there, so you'll come down this road here, you'll loop around, you'll stop there. And then what's going to happen is you're going to come along and you're going to stop right before the bridge, I think. Yeah, that works out quite nicely. Then you'll come the long way around, or you'll just go into the central station here, the Dundee Halt, which really isn't getting too much use, to be honest. I thought it'd get a little bit more use, but it doesn't look like it, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and modify this tram line. Do you know I just did delete some stuff, remove the old bus stops to tidy things up. So let's go ahead and make the modifications. So bus lanes, yes. Tram tracks, yes. So what I'm wanting is it to come down here, then instead you're actually going to come along this main street here for two blocks. Then what you're going to do is you're going to come down here. So we select just large streets. You're going to come along here, turn right around here. Then you're going to continue along this road along the bottom here. I'll have to go ahead and modify that afterwards. Then we're right close to the bridge as well, so hopefully that'll maybe overlap in a little bit of speed of influence. We'll come up here and then we'll come into the depot easy as. I swear half the time I actually do more destroying than good. Uh, someone was commenting down in the comment section below, uh, basically I shouldn't go ahead, or not I shouldn't, he recommended that I don't go ahead and destroy the buildings. I understand what you mean, and if it was a series where, in a sense, I didn't have unlimited money, then I would be a lot more picky. However, I don't enjoy that sort of thing. I don't enjoy going ahead and, you know, moving a station the tiniest margin to go ahead and make profit. That's just not what I enjoy myself, so that's why, essentially, I am not doing it. Right, let's go ahead and modify this line, and this line is a big line. I forgot how many stops it has. We're on 23 stops and that's about to rise. Church Road though is going to disappear going forward, but that also might mean though that there's more of a purpose for the Dundee Halt because right now there's just no one waiting at it at all. So let's go ahead and first of all move at stops number 23 from the roster and then also stop number 2. So after Dundee Halt, you're now going to go to... London Road, and then London Road, you're going to come along here and stop at Grange Road, and that works out fine. Then after bus stop number 23, North Street, you're going to stop at Grange Road, and then you're going to stop at London Road, and there we go, that's the modification to the line, so not very big modification, but it works out nice and easy like that. 
So that is that modification now done and as we can see there's already somebody using this stop or waiting for a tram down at this stop. Only the one sold but there's also people starting to wait here at Dundee Hall so I think this will make the world a difference and we've also got someone waiting over here at Grange Road and especially when we get the boat up and running this is when this expansion will turn much more profitable. It's going to be quite difficult to notice it when you're actually going ahead and viewing the overall figure for the Dundee Perth. It was at about 350k, understandably it's dropped because there's been a modification and it's a longer route. However, I'm hoping that it should get up to about 500k when the boat is up and functioning. So that is the modification at this end of the line now complete. We're now going to jump over here too and we have a choice and we can actually make two different boats down here which is a strong possibility so Dunbar Berwick you know go ahead and choose which one you want to go for. Interestingly by the way the trams holy shit I knew the trams were doing well when we analysed it at the start of the video but oh my goodness the amount of what let's, let's count this up very quickly one two three four five six seven eight nine there is at least nine stops with over 100 people waiting which means i think we need to go ahead and deploy a lot more trams onto this very very quickly as we can see 304 that dude for a tram that is absolutely amazing so how do we go ahead and solve this issue well i think for the first ever time we can go ahead and deploy i'm gonna try deploying some of these bad boys here so the first thing I need to check is this top speeds. The top speed, there's not much difference. To be fair, there is a 43 miles per hour between the Citadis and the DT 80 meters. I think we're going to go ahead and buy quite a few of these. And I think we're going to buy four of these because I think it's needed to, first of all, clear the backlog. And it will also, I mean, they're not the most elegant around corners as we've seen in the last episode. But I think it will go ahead and continue to spur the profits on and take over a million. Which for a tram, as I said before, trams don't make that much money. They just transport people from A to B and you make your money usually off trains. So let's go ahead and assign you onto the Edinburgh Berwick. I want to actually see the monstrosity that you guys will be because... First of all, you can see them poking out the back and they're long as shit. Are they actually that long? Because that actually could be a problem with traffic. So, as we can see here, I'm pretty adamant that all the trams are going to be absolutely full. So, to be fair, they're not too long, actually. I mean, they are long. Yes, but they're not ridiculously long. I mean, they're double the length of a Citadis, which is understandable. So, that should... Yeah, it's going to be interesting when it's at a stop here, actually, because I want to... Oh. Do I like this or do I not? Did you stop? Or you'll actually have to go all the way to the end of the line before you stop. So we'll come back and we'll just see how that does going forward. I think it will actually be a, a good modification overall. However, we might need to go ahead and update some of the Citadises to also DTs if that's the 80 or the 48 meter models. So originally I said I wanted to have the boat come into Dunbar and I'm still agreeing with that for the time being. I might go ahead and add in a Berwick. Should I also add in a Berwick boat as well? I'm just actually thinking, no, I'm going to start off in Berwick just because the transport connections are so close by. Then if we go ahead and do the Dunbar, I mean the bus station isn't quite close to the coast, but I might make a modification on, for example, the bus which goes in between Berwick and Dunbar. You can see that this bus is doing it so much worse now that the tram's in operation, as we can see the buses are near enough empty, so that's something which we will need to go ahead and look at as well. It's just when you build something, again, it's uh, going back to this reviewing what you've done because every line modification you make, it often has an impact on another line as well, even if you don't realise it. Anyway, enough talking shite, Callum. Let's do some building. Let's go ahead and see if we can... Ideally, I want you, like, right in there. However, this is not as going to be as easy as I think it's going to be. I want to try and fit it very close to this station here anyway, though. So as we can see here right now, this tram is picking up people, however, it cannot, I mean, that is absolutely awful. Can cars still get through? Cars can still go through, so, and I actually want to see how badly this turns. It's picked up 104 people, and it's done its job. The good thing is, though, I mean, there's, what, how many? 134 people waiting there, so it's by no means going to solve the issue. It's actually so ugly going around that. Uh, how hideous is that? It is, <laughs> Awful, absolutely awful. I think though that, I mean, it's, it's going to do the job. It doesn't need to necessarily look pretty. It's going to do the job though. And it's not really holding anything else up, which is good. 
So there we have it, that was a lot more difficult than I thought it would be, it's just because of the jagged coast really, it's just the buildings as you can see here, prime example, the jagged coast is making it extremely difficult to go ahead and fit anything in without doing some mass destroying, and unfortunately I just had to do some mass destroying, there will be buildings which will appear back in here very very shortly, I have that feeling though. So with that built we can go ahead and basically build the line, I might go ahead and have the bus which stops at that stop there just come up one stop and or one street sorry and come via the harbour I think that might be a better thing to do but we'll do that after we actually get the bus into or the boat sorry into operation so Ben Exciting's up to done D I really don't think there would have ever been a route in between these two towns Berwick being in England and Dundee, I mean I know Dundee was very much a city which did a lot of trading and its harbour did get used way 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 back in the day and it still has a, I mean it doesn't have a good harbour at all, there's quite a few nice um, yachts, what there's one really really important one which is based in the harbour at Dundee, it's some like big art thing or some historic thing, I can't remember but I mean, Dundee did used to have a significant dock area, however, I wouldn't have had connections with Berwick, I can pretty much put money on that. So that is the boat line there from Berwick to Dundee. Now, before we go ahead and actually continue on, thinking about maybe adding in the Dunbar, I'm actually going to add in two terminals there, just in case I go for that going forward, so that means I don't have to upgrade this later on where there's problems with boats being in the way so on so forth. So the final thing I need to do is just go ahead and add in a dock to actually put boats onto this route. We're going to go ahead and do this up here on Fife just because this is going to be the halfway point really in between Dundee and either Berwick or Dunbar, wherever the boats will be put onto. So passengers, it's going to have to be the jet foil and going back to this earlier argument, the smaller hovercraft here as you can see the HC Capacity of 15, got a decent top speed but that capacity just isn't high enough. Then on the flip side of that you've got the Zeppelin which the Zeppelin can carry 175 people, great, 16 miles per hour, absolutely awful. So the jet foil all round best, capacity of 68, top speed of 51 and also has a very good loading speed as well. I don't think it's too powerful, I mean it's not part of the default game, it is a mod, however it's... There is such, I mean, if these two boats were a little bit closer together, the hovercraft and the zeppelin, then it would be okay, but because there's such a contrast, there needs to be some form of boat in between, and that's why I'm going for the jet foil. So let's go ahead and start off with, I think, just the four on this line, and then we can go ahead and obviously add more as time goes on. I'm not really at all sure how um, in demand it's going to be. If you want to go from the two towns right now, then you need to go from Dundee to... Stirling. The fastest way we'd be there would be to go to Stirling, get off at Stirling train station and get on the other train down to Berwick. So right now you're on a two different kinds of transport or two train process. You could also go via bus from Dundee to Perth or train to Perth, then go down to Edinburgh, then get on. So there's a three-step process there. So I'm thinking that this boat line could do okay, I just don't know how high the demand will be. I know some people will use it, but the demand's a bit shaky, that is for sure. So let's go ahead and actually look at some of the bus lines in and around Berwick and Dunbar, because that is something which I think needs a little bit of focus. Aberdeen Peterhead as well, that's something which I said I'd look at and I will do at another stage. Right, so let's come down here. So Berwick Dunbar, we're losing money on this, and that's really not good at all. Why is that? Kind of obvious to me, the tram and the train are going ahead and taking all the market share, that's for sure. But I am going to go ahead, and I'm going to keep it, but we're going to go ahead and change the buses on it, because there's no need for 60-seater buses. 40-seater buses, I think, are more than adequate for this line. So you guys are going to go ahead and all return to the depot and get sold upon return. Then what we're going to do is jump into the bus depot, which there should be one around here. Maybe just the Edinburgh one, actually. We'll go ahead and we'll buy just the city bus ones, the 40-seater buses, because, the, as I said, there was no need for the 60-seaters. The 40-seaters, I think, would be much, much better. We're still only going to buy three of them for the time being, because all three of those buses were extremely empty, and I can't really see them getting any fuller over time unless there's somehow some massive expansion in Dunbar or Berwick 
but yet again, I, I mean, that's not going to happen. The next line I want to look at is the Bennick to Newcastle. So this line is doing extremely well. Surprised how well it's doing actually for six buses. You're doing well, you're doing well. I think it's a distance and uh, to be fair, actually, a lot of you buses are doing very well. Especially, yeah, I mean, there's what, 40 is full. I think it's a distance as well. The longer distance you go on the bus, there is more money involved. That kind of makes sense. And there's like no stops in between these towns at all. And it's a very large gap in between them. If anything, we're going to go ahead and actually add on more buses because there's a lot of stops. And I can also add in an extra stop in Newcastle as well, which is what I'll do very quickly. Then we can go ahead and just increase the capacity because there, if we're making like, what, 1.3 million right now, then we can definitely go ahead and turn that into 2 million going forwards. So let's add, I want to add in a stop just right at the edge of town here. I also want to go ahead and I'm surprised I've not done this yet. We'll come back to this line in a second. I need to go ahead and upgrade this road. So bus lanes, yes. And this is what I mean. With, I've just not focused on this region in it so, so, so long. That is something that I've been meaning to do and I've been saying I should do it and I've just not done it. That's just the bottom line. So let me go ahead and just upgrade this whole main street for the time being just because it needs it. And this this is just the neglect that this place has had. That's the bottom line and it's, it's bad. It is really bad. How are you down to there? This is difficult and it's because the railway line is directly underneath as well. So it's not pretty at all. You won't even allow that to be built there. But nonetheless, a lot of that is now upgraded. And in general, traffic in Newcastle really isn't that bad. I'm really surprised how all right it actually is. Well, let's go ahead now and actually add in some more buses at this end. And let's modify the line at this end as well. As we can see, there's a lot of people waiting here. But you guys are going to get shifted to a different bus stop. I don't really know how many people will use the bus from the boat. I think it's going to be a... I don't know, if, if, if you're going down to Newcastle, then you're going to get on the bus and go. But because we're so close to the main station here, as you can see in the middle of our screen in Bennick, then uh, there wouldn't really be much point. But I don't really know how this game works. If it's like your closest transport, you automatically go for it. It's not, I can't imagine there's much smart AI in this game, if you understand what I'm saying. So the first thing I need to do, as I said, is go ahead and add in some more buses. So we're going to go ahead and add in four more buses. That is an extra 240 seats onto the line so you guys can roll out. Then let's go ahead and actually modify this line. So the Bennick to Newcastle, currently 1.3 million. We'll come back and actually analyze and see how we're doing on this overall. But York Road, so remove bus stop number two and number nine. And then that is one hell of a train unlock, which we'll go ahead and look at later on. After bus stop number one, you stop in there at North Road. Then at after bus stop number nine, it goes in there to North Road again. So that is that. They are easily added in. And along with that, I actually need to go ahead and add in this stop down here as well. So after eight, we stop there at King Street. And then after bus stop number three, we stop at King Street. I do reckon King Street will get a lot of use because... Without this stop here, this edges or these houses at the edge don't really get covered too well, and I think it will get a fair amount of use. It's just because, as I said, Newcastle's been neglected, and it's it's time that it gets a little bit of attention. So that there, we're not probably going to see the effects or get the results on the boat line in this episode. How is it doing so far? Is there people actually travelling on it? No one on that boat. One we saw on that boat. Up at this end, we can probably see the more people queuing. So there's two people there, one person there. Very low numbers, but there are people. We've got seven people waiting, and I think it's just now that the tram's in operation and is running properly, I think we'll start to see a little bit of a difference going forward. There's a shit ton of people waiting at Peterhead or on the Peterhead Presswick train at Dundee. So I think it's something which we'll go ahead and deal with in the next episode. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to wrap this episode up here, so hope you have enjoyed it. Please leave a like, rate and subscribe if you are new around here. Really in this episode we've only built a boat line, but going forward this is how this series is going to be. It's not going to be as much rush building. We're going to go ahead and sort of be moving away from just constant, constant building because it's going to be a lot of reviewing. As you can tell in this episode we've gone ahead and changed a lot of different kinds of trams, added in more buses, modified two bus lines, modified a tram line, built a boat line, built all the services for that boat line, so it's going to be a lot more stuff like that. 
So I hope you don't mind that. I do understand that everyone gets extremely excited about building and so do I, but at the same time, a lot of this nitty gritty stuff at this stage of the game needs to get done and that's really what this game and map has now turned into for me. In saying that though I am obviously still looking for more ideas on really what I should go ahead and continue to build on this map. Shortly we are going to be building the train line from Edinburgh through Perth, Pitlochery, Aviemore and up to Inverness. Then along with that we are going to go ahead and turn our attention to some other goods other than food shortly as well. What else should I go ahead and do? I'm not really at all sure. You can go ahead and tell me down in those comments below. So just one final note actually before we go, I want to see how these monstrosity of trams are doing. They're doing extremely well, they're doing their job. As we can see there is one of them's full and then another one's over 100. However at the same time there are some which are incredibly low but if we do look at the whole tram line in general as we can see there's still a lot of people waiting so I have a choice and I'm not really at all sure what I'm going to go for here. I think what I might do is go ahead and sell all the trams that are on this and go for the DT 40 meters, the one which can eat 64 people and go ahead and have a lot of them because I think that's the best going forward. As you can see here, this is the problem we're having with the longer trams. It's not pretty at all, is it? So I think the, the long trams do good on people numbers, but they do not look pretty and that is just absolutely hideous. So you get what I mean. I think we are going to go ahead and make that change and I'll do that off camera for the next episodes. Anyway, I'm wrapping this episode up here. So thank you very much for watching. My name is Conflict Now Callum and I'm out.